Dear Earthmates, we are visiting uh, Selaniko. How do you say it in Greek? We say Thessaloniki. Sel you say Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. Yeah. We Sel say Thessaloniki. You say Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. Yes. yes. Petros yes. Kolitsis, doctor yes. uh, exactly. of uh, economics. Uh, yes. He's a poet as well. It's not e e often that we meet somebody who's a poet and an economist. That's true. These are two people. These are two identities. <laughs> Separate. <laughs> so you have two people in front of you and two eyes. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. You I love I love multiple yeah. personality disorder. I, I good. Really... This disorder <laughs> is the key word here. <laughs> When we when we go to the theater, we should buy two tickets for. <laughs> well, that's true. We call for both of us. Just a yeah. <laughs> message capture. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yes, thank you, Eric. Now, the floor is yours. Yes. Uh, how did your love for poetry start? It's the traditional question. Not that's that a great important. question. That's a great question. Through painting. <laughs> That's my, my first sincere uh, answer. I grew up in a painting atelier. My mother is a painter. And uh, I recall myself uh, first uh, being exposed to painted trees and nature under an expressionistic, uh, modernistic style. This is the style, the artistic painting style of my mother. And then I recall myself finding out that there are trees, that are actual trees out in the nature. So I had the twisted start, let's say. So uh, I found myself uh, through art onto moving on to the actual reality that we commonly share as human beings or beings generally speaking in discussions. So uh, as time evolved, I knew that I couldn't express myself through painting because painting does not move in time, it's uh, frozen in time. So I have this, uh, let's say, I lean towards, uh, in a way, the, the perception which calls for a movement in time. So uh, this is how I moved into poetry from a rather early age. And of course, through favorite poets and through exposure to styles and so on, and theater plays, as you know yourself uh, perfectly. Uh, eventually, art is one, but my own mean for blending uh, all this in one. Uh, let's say artistic approach is uh, the poetic one. This is what I would like to say at this point, Tariq. I'm not listening to you, Tariq. Oh, you sorry. Should... Okay. sorry. Um, and of course, uh, Greek poetry is rich. And, uh, and uh, have... also we have, as long as we mentioned uh, Thessaloniki, uh, Hikmet was born in Thessaloniki, the great Turkish poet, the friend of Ritsos. Yes, uh, yes, yes, that's true. So, so yes, but yes, uh, the Greek uh, uh, the tradition and uh, culture in terms of poetry, yes, we have two nobles, Seferis Elitis, we have Kavafis, we have Ritsos, and we can discuss this as much as you like. Yes, there is a rich tradition, yes. Wonderful. And they are also well known and respected, loved in Turkey uh, as elsewhere. And um, uh, I visited uh, your hometown uh, thanks to the invitation of my uh, poet friend, Yorgos, uh, you know. Uh, you are no back in the days, no. When did you? Uh, he's the president of the Hellenic uh, Authors Society. Yes, 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 Hularas. Yes. Y yeah. Yes, 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 and um, yes, they're located in Athens, yes, the Hellenic one, yes, for the entire, yes. And um, uh, my wife and I and our daughter had a tour in Greece, uh, it was wonderful, and mm -hmm. um, my relationship with the Iliad uh, has also been important to me. Uh, I tried to, uh, I wrote actually uh, a, derivative, a derivative poem based mm -hmm. on that. Anyway, uh, so uh, 
how about economics? How come, uh, how did you become an economist? But uh, I was uh, I was uh, leaning towards your uh, poetry, to be honest, and uh, how your uh, poetry is related to Iliad. That will be further in the discussion. We can come back to this, though. Uh, my mother was a painter. My father was uh, an economist. I don't know where in Mediterranean. I don't know whether it's a cultural thing. We lean towards the decisions of our uh, parents. Uh, I liked economy, to be honest. I liked political economy. I was highly interested in how uh, we can we can resolve uh, issues uh, due to scarce inputs. So I was really involved into realizing how eventually the the economic related uh, approach onto relations, which goes at the end everything is a relation, economic relation, production related relation, labor relations, and so on. So I was interested on the productive side, let's say, of uh, of humanity. I was also interested in uh, how different species uh, like uh, ants or bees organize and how deterministic these societies are and how randomness in terms of human behavior, which is always random to a point. Uh, because eventually economics is a social science, addressing uh, the human behavior, human options, choices, other scarcity, other limitations, other frameworks, institutional, national, cultural, historical, geopolitical. So I was highly involved. Of course, it's another part of my, of my brain, if you allow me. So I am not trying to bring the two together, poetry and economics. Uh, but uh, I have a sensitivity on these matters, uh, let's say a natural inclination towards those and also I thought it was a good way to make a living speaking about history of economic ideas about history of economic analysis so I was highly onto this evolution of ideas as I've said in terms of poetry moving in time again history of uh, uh, human perception in resolving these issues starting from Adam Smith moving to David Ricardo to Karl Marx and so on and so forth in our times. So all these are uh, things that uh, I thought interesting and a good easy way for me naturally to, to make a living. So I act like an academic uh, and speaking about these matters and getting money for things that I will say for free <laughs> or I will even pay for people to, to listen to me. So uh, it's more like an inclination, I would say. I hope this covers you, even though this is a really long topic and discussion. Uh, it's a way that I would like to position myself. I'm still struggling with this question, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know at the end. But I, I'm still struggling in a way. I'm still struggling in a way yes. to, to answer this question. Uh, my wife is the economist of our family. Family and she, ah, she's uh, uh, her major was economics, and uh, so I've been comfortable in my family life in terms of that. Uh, <laughs> I only oh, proud of sharing. You are like, <laughs> you are like <laughs> and, proud and like. <laughs> and uh, uh, I also uh, enjoy forcing myself to grasp a little bit of economics, uh, natural sciences, uh, so-called. And uh, uh, um, I, I study more science than uh, literature, actually. Uh, I enjoy writing uh, and uh, uh, tasting various authors, poets, uh, but I'm, I'm not a scholar. Uh, and I have the freedom of uh, playing uh, with ma the material, uh, let's say, presented by previous authors and present authors. Um, and um, I, I think it's difficult to be as a scholar uh, and an artist, uh, and few people can do it. You are one of them. And uh, uh, it's great because the, the discipline. Just give, just give me a second to inform my family about. Come back, I'm back. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that, Eric. Okay, just inform. No okay. problem. Life is going on. Yes, 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 yes. yes. You cannot stop. You cannot. Stop. And. and um, uh, 
who are some of the uh, poets or authors uh, you like very much, especially? It's a great question. Of course, I will start with the one you mentioned before, Homer, for sure. Okay, Iliad, it's a great uh, life-changing. Uh, if I had one day in my life, most probably I would be reading Iliad again. Uh, Homer, Sophocles, uh, you repeat this, uh, Schilus, is generally from ancient Greece. These are the most important ones in a way, along with, I've been a few days ago, four or five days ago, I've been to Stanford upon Avon in UK, so I visited the, the grave of Shakespeare. Shakespeare is uh, it's a great uh, individual, an artist, a poet. He, he, he says on his, tomb, uh, on his stone, on his grave, that he's a poet. And I, I purchased once again the complete work, the second edition. And I, I love too much, I do about nothing. And I've opened the book there and I randomly read a, a part which starts by saying, uh, the following, uh, I'm, I'm rather, I'm just a fool. Don't trust neither my readings nor my observations. <laughs> and then, uh, which holds in my case as well. This is a great point, uh, way to, to start <laughs> any response. So don't trust neither my readings nor my observations. Of course, Shakespeare mm -hmm. afterwards says very interesting things in order to move the the story and uh, eventually pass a message, but it's a good way to, to start. Any, uh, he was an actor uh, yes. too, and that's important, I think, in playwriting, especially. That so one... Shakespeare, Shakespeare, certainly, yes. cer certainly, certainly Shakespeare. Let's go to our, uh, to the ones that make us now feel very bad. Uh, Russians, I love Dostoevsky. Oh, yes, of course. Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky. I love Arseniy Tarkovsky, the, the poet, the father of the Andrei Tarkovsky, of the, the very important filmmaker, Arseniy Tarkovsky, Akhmatova. Uh, I, I love uh, his, uh, Mandelstam, of course. Bronsky, Bronsky is great. Kavafis is great. Uh, I love also T.S. Eliot. Uh, I love Eliot. Rilke, Wallace Stevens. I've translated Wallace Stevens uh, in, in Greek, a very big uh, volume, a very, very generous, let's say, selection of poems. Wallace Stevens is one of my favorites. And as I move in time, I, I'm, 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 let's say, I'm between Eliot and Wallace Stevens in terms of how they evolved in their time, and in their, as they aged and as they became more mature in blending intellect and uh, forms of art and the material that they work with. I've been to Bloomsbury again a few days ago. It was a coincidence just to bring up my recent memories uh, where he, he was. So Eliot certainly. Uh, I like uh, Hikmet, as I said before, from the Turkish tradition, there are more uh, Mediterranean artists alike. I insist on this distinction, Mediterraneans versus, let's say, the, the Northerners. Get, of course, to go back to the classic ones. Uh, so these are the ones that I, that I really find myself into reading and rereading and being preoccupied. So I'm, uh, I lean towards a form in terms, in terms of the form towards, let's say, modernism. I like uh, Seferis, uh, I like uh, Kavathis, something else. But on the other hand, I always go back to, to these classics. So that will be my answer on this. And uh, how do you write? Uh, for example, is, uh, is there a specific time of the day, such as morning or evening at night, or do you write any time? Anywhere, anywhere, anytime, or yes, are there periods question. of time to you need you you focus? Or? Here I will uh, I will follow the the answer of Milton Sakhturis, another important Greek poet that died uh, seventeen years ago. Milton Sakhturis was uh, the first, let's say, expressionist poet in uh, in Greece in contemporary modern let's say, Greek twentieth century. And he had been saying, in my case, Miltos had been saying that uh, the, the poems uh, pop up by their own. They are, uh, they are uh, highly cooked in very high temperatures within uh, my, let's say, my chest or my belly, whatever the, the location might be, okay, hard and stomach and brain. And uh, they pop up uh, in their main form as one. And then once you have the poem, you, you work on it. 
of course, it's an art. Okay, so you work, you, you, it's like sculpting in time, as Tarkovsky had been saying about this. Uh, movies, so it's sculpting in time, but the main form, it's, uh, it pops up in my case as well, as a unified part. Of course, this uh, heating that takes place inside, it means that you are constantly preoccupied with some concepts you know, for, uh, for a very long time. Uh, to give you a random thought, I've been, uh, I have written a poem about uh, the uh, civilization of uh, Central America, the uh, the Aztec, as we say, in terms of how they treated the bodies, the heart, and all that. Uh, and I was exposed for years on reading this type of, uh, of uh, historical practices and so on. So eventually having one point about an entire civilization it has in such a dense form, it's a matter that uh, cannot appear like this. It means that you are preoccupied for months, years with topics. Eventually, if someone can make 20, 30 poems of these uh, standards, uh, and having this uniqueness in terms of the, the final form of the, of, the, of the poem. And if this poem adds something on the pre-experienced, pre-observed forms of art of others, resembling, but at the same time having a unique identity, as we will say about distinguishing Bach from Mozart or Beethoven, or distinguishing one artist from another, in this sense, I would say there is an achievement. So they're slowly cooked in... Uh, be beneath uh, the earth, and uh, we intervene. I intervene, I'm one <laughs> in, in the in the form, trying to achieve a uniqueness, which is also something that uh, moves in time through cultivation and through commitment. So eventually, it's an art. So this is our suffering and our commitment. Yes, and um, do you write uh, directly on the computer, or do you write? using a pen or pencil, a paper, a notebook, or? That's it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I will say all, all, yeah. all four. Uh, what I prefer the most, to be honest, is uh, when I have nothing. And uh, now it's rather not than that common in our days. We always have a smartphone in our pockets. Uh, but my favorite uh, way of writing is to memorize, having uh, the poem appearing in the brain and working on the poem for hours and uh, working on it. Uh, I, have, I have a good memory at, 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 uh, until now, at least. So I can uh, work uh, visual or in an audio form within the brain of the poem. And I come back to this. Of course, I'm not writing down long poems. My poems are, let's say, on average feet on one page. So it's doable. Uh, I've lost some great things, <laughs> but Again, the same ideas are uh, given again uh, under a different form. So it's a, a game that I really, I really like to play. And also, I say in poems by my heart. Uh, after all, it's easier you not know, to uh, when we have worked on those. So my plan is not to, to have eventually more than 50, 80 poems that eventually will meet my selected, let's say, final uh, version of my poetry within a lifetime. I assume now I'm halfway. I'm 43 years old. So if I'm halfway, I'm not, <laughs> and if I have another half, I, I really do not want that. And I will keep on sacrificing and uh, having poems that uh, do not meet my, my criteria and my standards. So the ones that insist in memory and can have a form as they appear there, I think are the, are the, the ones that will last a bit more than my existence here that we share now in time and space. Uh One of my plays is uh, The Golden Fleece. Uh, I, uh, based on, of course, Apollonius of Rhodes uh, on his uh, epic. And I uh, put the character of the poet Apollonius uh, into the play. Mm -hmm. uh, so Apollonius and a group of actors are performing the myth or the story and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, i was uh, influenced by the greek mythology uh, when i was a child uh, and even then and so in a poem i wrote when i was 11 i said to an imaginary woman you know i am apollo and you are uh, you are aphrodite and i am apollo 
And I know this is just a dream, just an image, but still it keeps me living, et cetera, et cetera. So the Greek mythology has been very influential in my life. Mm -hmm. And if I had to choose a religion, I would probably choose the uh, Zeus, Hera, et, you know, all, all the multi, uh, the, the uh, what, well, not, uh, polytheistic, uh, such colorful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like a TV series today. I mean, uh, let me let me say something on that. As long as you mention. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly on what you just said about the, the many, the polytheistic, the many gods. And as long as we had been speaking about Homer, something that people tend not to observe when they read the uh, Iliad is that uh, half of the gods, out of 12 gods, six gods are supporting uh, Achaeus, let's say the Greeks, and six gods are supporting uh, Hector, Hector, Priamus, the, the, the Trojan side. Out of the six and six, there is a proportion. And out of the six, three are male, three are female on both sides. Wonderful. I this didn't is a rather... Uh, of that. Yes, I, I, I haven't read this. I observe this by my own. Wonderful. Uh, Great observation. I, Great. It's a good Great. observation, I believe. So this, uh, the fact that... Uh, uh, for example, when Achilles uh, kills uh, Hector, and when he drags uh, him uh, with the face down for days, uh, having uh, used ropes to tighten him on the on his car, on his carriage, the face of the Hector is uh, it uh, does sustain its uh, characteristics and it's not ruined because it's exposed to some uh, dirt and stones and the movement. It should look like. Sorry, the, the, the voice? Yes, yes. So uh, I say that what I'm saying here is that the, the goddess, Athena, for example, supports and sustains uh, the face of, uh, of Hector. So anyway, the gods are, are proportional and they, they intervene and sustain this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, equal uh, uh, approach on both. That's very oh, admirable. That's very admirable. A very ethical stand of Homer. Yes, and what we tend not to understand about Homer, having said that, is that he says to us, okay, you don't pick sides. You suffer with uh, Priamus, that um, the, he, 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 he asks for his dead son from the killer of the son, Achilles, to, be, to, to, to deliver a proper burial. And uh, at the, at the, at the, and eventually, okay, what Homer says there is that there are no sides to pick. Okay, we have to sympathize with both uh, sides, obviously. We have the problem of our mortality. In a, day we, we, in, the, in a day, we all, in a way, all, we all die young or quick enough. So we have our own suffering. And on that, we suffer the conflicts and the catastrophes and the disasters that we bring uh, in our own life. So we have pandemics, we have earthquakes, we have tsunami, we have all these problems. And we add the killing, which is a terrible case now, under the Russian invasion of Ukraine. In our in our time, which is terrible. terrible. It's terrible. 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 It's terrible. Mm -hmm. And um, I detest uh, political analyses, cold analyses, saying that well, given that the NATO blah blah blah, and that is so the Russian etc. Uh, etc. Et these are all trying to justify what's going on. You know, people are dying, etc. Uh, so I ethically I refuse to calculate pros and cons of this aggression. I ethically I I resist yes. to that, and I say this is wrong. It is wrong. That's all. <laughs> you know, uh, because then everybody has excuses for all kinds of aggression. Uh, yes, and. Um, uh, what would you recommend to uh, aspiring uh, poets and economists, young ones? That's a great one. Let's start uh, with economists this time. Uh, 
Easier. Uh, no, it's not easy because uh, the, the, the father of modern economic science is Adam Smith, who wrote the, an inquiry into the nature and the causes of the wealth of nations in 1776. Adam Smith was a philosopher. He started uh, more than 10 years ago, 17 years ago, with uh, the theory of moral sentiments. So the father of economic modern science was a philosopher. Uh, and he was a friend of David Hume. And they I, had been I, discussing. I, I'm a humist in a way. I was, uh, I'm a, he's great. I like, I like. And, he, and, and Hume, things that people tend not to know, had been discussing about economic matters with Adam Smith. I didn't 250 know. years ago, when Hume had been saying to Adam Smith that, or Adam Smith says that Hume understood the problem of a trade surplus, which is if, if it is always on the one side, it will accumulate too much wealth and power, and that will cause an imbalance and depreciating forces and generally chaos. So a philosopher, Hume, and an economist and philosopher back in the second half of the 18th century had resolved matters that we still preoccupy ourselves with. So I will say that ethics, philosophy, history of ideas should be always go along with this technical, let's say, approach to using techniques, mathematics, statistics are useful, this is how I make my living, but uh, these are means towards an end, an end should be discussed socially and uh, in the form of community and so on. So that will be the case. 19th century, again, Karl Marx was a philosophist without the dogma that he led, obviously, on to, or again, economist and philosophy. So to blend economics with history of ideas in our times is uh, Thomas Piketty, which is a great uh, economist, again, uh, promoting social cohesion and the model that will uh, will incorporate the environmental sustainability and all these matters. In terms of uh, poetry, I will say the same. Go back to the classics, to Esther, to any reader that uh, wants to go to poetry. You have to go back to the giants. Okay. Shakespeare, Eliot, Goethe, just name them. Uh, uh, Whitman. Whitman is a great uh, poet, apart from Wallace Stevens that we mentioned before from USA. So go back to the to these uh, forms of art and live within those and come back again and again. These are not things to be consumed. These are things to accompany you. The question I always raise, if I have seven days, three days, one day left, uh, is what I will be reading out of this. It's like music that you read again, you listen to again and again. The same applies with poetry. So I'm listening to four quartets of Elliot. I walk around and these are part of the echo in my brain shaping, and the same applies with uh, many big, uh, big authors of that uh, magnitude. Let's mention Majakovsky as well, even though his mentality is different, he's too extrovert for me, too loud, but uh, he's another very important individual. So you go back, also if I, I recall Asbury, the American poet, saying that uh, when he read the Elitis, in, uh, in American English, he said that he didn't like his uh, his tone. He perceived this as to be too high. This is not the case in Elitis. This is a mistransfer in terms of translation. So even if our times do not like these extrovert, uh, high, uh, let's say, tone uh, poets like Agelo Sikelianos, another important Greek poet, back in the days, uh, it shouldn't mean that this, if the style of our times, the, the sensitivity, the way we perceive the art in our times, it's not psychological, whatever that is mentally, very close to what we do. Again, we should expose ourselves to this mentality, these forms of ideas, this mixture in terms of the form that uh, the art eventually takes, and just consider this as another version of this complex, complex human brain, uh, transforming uh, experience onto pieces of art, static or uh, dynamic. So this is uh, my response to fellow poets. Yes, you, you're, you're muted. Uh, yes, and uh, as for the future of our planet, humanity, um, I mean, uh, in spite of the differences, we all live on the same planet and uh, how can we improve our uh, synergy in the world? Very hard. What, uh, there I love uh, the, the, the Darwin. I've been there as well on his grave a week ago. 
and I was with my 14-year-old daughter, so I wanted to expose uh, her to this uh, perception of biology, even though her mother, my wife, is biologist and she lives on to this perspective. But on the other hand, this uh, biological approach, as you say, we, 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 we are uh, fellow beings on, to, on a planet, so you, 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 you don't use the word human beings. So uh, sharing this planet, means that we should be comparing species to species. So I'm interested in uh, my eyes, my nose, my nose or my eyes, your eyes. It's just a solution amongst many in terms of resolving specific uh, cosmos-related matters. The, the way we move, I perceive my, my belly, my, my, as uh, the, the price we pay to move. Okay, so our, our, our system of consuming and uh, transforming food onto energy, just the, the, the roots of trees, just another solution and the price we pay for movement. So I think the solution is to share as much as possible the common uh, solutions that we ended up with biologically speaking, in order to understand our limitations, our exposures, our, uh, that the fact that this, this is just one solution, there is no perfect solution, how can this be a perfect solution okay we, with the same thing existed 65 million years ago so it's the same solution that biology had given for dinosaurs okay so these the, the, all this is the same the solution so what is this eventually okay and uh, along with this biological geological if you want to zoom out a bit further solution this uh, sunset that we've seen from mars i follow curiosity i love curiosity i wrote a poem about this uh, these matters, transforming this into art. So uh, this view, not in terms of having a hotel for rich people watching uh, Earth from uh, Moon, just to say that I've been there. No, uh, just go to NASA and uh, NASA and uh, watch the sunset from there. All of us have access to it. This can make us better uh, human beings in terms of being more environmentally sensitive. It's already too late. We have destabilized the system. Everything is destabilized. But still, okay, we can do what we can do to, to sustain what can be sustained. Eventually, we will be considered barbarians in a couple of generations. I'm, over, I'm, over, I'm, I'm pessimistic in my nature, but I'm optimistic in my projection. So uh, I hope that we will be perceived as barbarians because we are. We are a terrible generation. And that, and the previous is, generation. And that, that implies that there will, there will be a future. That's also good. A future exactly. will serve this, this is the... <laughs> this is the optimism in the projection. This is the optimist, pessimistic in <laughs> my nature, optimistic in the projection. So let's hope that they will perceive us as barbarians as we are. If we are perceived as a very nice uh, moment, momentum of humanity, things will be terrible. So we are a species that it will be better off to, to conclude and leave the space for others that do not harm the, the ecosystem. On the other hand, we cannot judge as human beings uh, and use the, these in a dogmatic way and harm our fellow human beings because we will be protecting. So we have to perceive us as something common on that because extreme uh, forms of uh, ecology could uh, be dogmatic and uh, someone should be careful in these directions uh, as well. Great. Thank so you so much, dear Petros. Uh, I, uh, dear I thank you. Earthmates, uh, Petrolistis and I, this has been our first conversation, but I feel and want that it will not be the last one. And it's I've enjoyed it very much. We're together. And uh, yeah. I hope you can join the Earth Civilization Network monthly meetings. Uh, 80 minutes, 90 minutes on Zoom, we'll, we'll, we'll communicate. Share the links. Let me say United is still morning there. Tamam. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. We are together. It was great. We are together, my dearest Earthmate, Tariq. Thank you very much. We stay in touch. Bye. Thank you.